Okay, hello everybody. So, uh, to start with, we're just going to go through the, the background of the evening meeting because then you, it gives you a good sense of uh, how it was created and why it is so valuable and the context in which it happened. So, the story begins with Osho getting up from his chair at the end of a talk, getting into the car, and then explaining to whoever was with him in the car that he had a strange dislocating sensation in his center and he wasn't going to be talking again. So for everybody that was really shocking because in a way that was the center of everything that was happening. Um, but with Osho you didn't really know, n not speaking again this week, this month, forever. So everybody was really in a gap and Osho really enjoys everybody being in a gap and uh, this was a very successful gap because just some of you are new, yes, you're new to Osho, yes, yes. well contrary to what most people tell you, you're very very lucky and I'll explain why and this is a good situation we're talking about. So in those days the only Osho there was, was Osho out there who speaks, okay? And when he says, I I'm not coming out anymore, that was a huge gap in everyone's life. Now, does anyone know what Osho means when it relates to him? Anyone know what it means? So, you can actually have fun with people, uh, who look like they've been around a long time and you can go up to them and say, uh, I, I hear you use this word Osho uh, a lot, uh, I was just wondering what it meant when it referred to Osho, to, to, to him, and uh, watch everybody kind of feel a little embarrassed because, you know, at least you could do is find out what the word means, you know what I mean? So you find everybody tends to sort of go, uh, or something or other, right? <laughs> and then you can make it even more embarrassing by saying, because uh, I actually heard he only said one thing about it. Uh, more discomfort, everyone's sort of hoping, oh, she, oh, she, something, right? And it's really an interesting story, because actually Osho didn't want a name, and then only accepted a name when everybody insisted. And then, basically <clears throat> at a particular point when he'd done all his name changes and confused everybody to the max, by then the publications department had produced tens of thousands of books all with the wrong name on. So consequently we had to spend all night sticking stickers into English in English books, Hindi in Hindi books with a simple explanation which was a message from Osho saying the name comes from William James's Oceanic, which most people tend to remember, right? And then he says, comes from William James's Oceanic, which describes the experience. And then the message goes on, but what about the experiencer? For that, we use the word Osho. So that was the only thing that was ever actually uh, explained from Osho directly about the meaning of Osho in his context, not as a sound in dynamic or at any other time, just as a name, right? Which he didn't want, as I said. So what you are, can see from this is that we were left at a situation of Osho being out there. Now he's defining Osho as the experiencer, the watcher, the witness, what he talks about every single night. Yes? So basically, for you guys, it's really simple. You want to get close to Osho, you love Osho, you're dedicated to Osho, whatever, 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 simple. Find the watcher. Find the witness. It's nothing to do with anything out there. For us, we were really didn't have that advantage. We didn't know anything about that. So for us, the only Osho was kind of out there somewhere. That you don't game, you don't have to play. There is nothing out there. 
Osho spent his whole time explaining the search was to look in. And now you see the story goes full circle. Okay, so it's really important you understand that. So all the people you see doing rugby tackles in Shantuzu, they're pointing in the wrong direction. The direction is this way, not that way, which makes your life really simple and easy and direct and clear, right? Not cluttered with all the other stuff that we ended up being cluttered up by. So, basically Osho's not speaking, he's quite sick and we, no one quite knew what was going on, and then he had all these teeth removed from the lower one side. So now it was clear he's not speaking again. So now what's going to happen? And then there's this long gap, and then comes an announcement there's going to be a new evening meditation. And first announcement is everyone, we're all going to wear white robes. Everyone goes, white robes? Well, no, what is this? And it's going to be called the Evening Meeting of the White Robe Brotherhood. So, like, Ku Klux Klan comes to town. Now what joke is Osho up to now, right? And <clears throat> then he says, so I'll come, and we'll have a celebration at the beginning. Then I'll sit in the chair, and we'll have three pieces of Indian music and three drum beats, just like now. And then he says, and I will leave, and then we're going to play a video. And everyone goes, play a video? No, no, I came here to be with you. I didn't come to watch a video. In any case, I was in the video. And so the first night, Osho leaves, and then half the population leave. So then the next day is the beginning of a ser series of fairly intense messages, the first of which is, um, and anyone who leaves early, Zareen, a fairly formidable lady, she will be at the gate and she'll take your name and you'll never be allowed in again. So suddenly this wasn't try Nada Brahma and see if you like it, this was you need to be there. And that was then the message for the whole of that period was just Osho trying to get across to everybody the importance of this process. It was, the announcements came that it was the highlight of the day, whether you were in the multiversity or in the, in the auditorium doing the meditations or medi workers' meditation. This was the peak of the day. This was the highlight of the day. And of course, there's only three things that are, nothing else is ever scheduled at the same time. One is dynamic, one is Kundalini, and the other is the evening meeting. And during the evening meeting, everything is locked down, just to kind of emphasize this is the most important part of the day, which was repeated by Osho on in different messages. And then we got a message, at that time Osho, uh, his idea was it would be at seven o'clock local time all around the world, and we couldn't do streaming then, which we can do now. But we got a message from Amsterdam saying, um, uh, would 6.30 be okay? Well, we just check, I'm, you know, I'm sure it's fine. Seven o'clock, right in the middle of your social life, understood, right? So this was, as actually we, we heard recently, Osho saying this needs to be at the top of your laundry list. You know, you've been mucking around, doing meditation forever and ever, and really not really applying yourself. Now, it's time. That was the kind of quality of the, the, whole, uh, the whole series of messages. And he'd get in the car and say, so uh, uh, where was so-and-so? You know, who would know? You know and then at four o'clock in the morning, call for a Coke and say, uh, uh, did you find where so-and-so was? You know, not about so-and-so, but just getting through our thick heads, this is really important. And then we got, of course, the proverbial messages from the proverbial kind of Swami Cleverhead from the Multiversity, who writes and says, uh, oh, uh, you know, I've listened to all your uh, audio recordings and, you know, I've read all your books, so, you know, you obviously don't mean me. So out comes the baseball bat again. What do you think these are? Detective novels you pick up, read, and throw away? Every time you go, your understanding gets deeper and deeper.
Yeah, but you know, I, I've seen this video before. There are many, many layers. So that was the kind of tenor of that period, right? And interestingly, many years later, we discovered that many years earlier, Osho was speaking about how people like him, maybe everybody, but people like him notice a strange dislocating sensation in their center, exactly the same length of time that they were in the womb before they're going to leave their bodies. Aha, uh -huh. anyway, go figure, nine months and nine days after him leaving the auditorium and getting in the car and saying, I'm not going to be speaking again, Osho's gone. So anyway, now you look back and realize that nine months, you see it in a completely different way, particularly understanding the importance of the evening meeting. And in particular, then you realize that everything about this campus was re how it was organized, everything about it was changed during that period. And then you go, aha, that figures now, I understand. And what, what's particularly interesting is there was a, a meeting in Buddha Grove where uh, all Osho's kind of list for the new campus was read out. And you can hear on the, uh, on the recording, people kind of laughing and kind of half disbelieving that there's going to be an Olympic-sized swimming pool and a jacuzzi and a sauna and a gym and a restaurant, a cafe and a, you know, disco and a new meditation hall. I mean, it's like shocking to everybody. Plus, there's also a kind of um, <clears throat> slight resistance you can hear in the process because we're not very good at change, right? And this was going to be big change. Does anyone still hear the word ashram around? Do you ever hear the word ashram? Yeah. You hear the word ashram? So that's an interesting, you too can join us in the Slow Learners Club because it was exactly at this time. Think how long ago that is. Osho explains this is not an ashram. We're dropping ashram, we're drop dropping commune and the whole energy of this new environment. And he talked about a holiday resort and a, a kind of a resort energy, resort atmosphere. That's where we were heading. And basically, <clears throat> he was really clear that this new place is going to have the energy of Zorba the Buddha. Now, why do people like Ashra? And how does that cling on? You think it's 25 years. That's long enough to actually uh, hear one simple request from Osho. And yet, do we listen? No, we keep. Why? Because our conditioning is from forever that there's something special about spiritual. Right? Spiritual's a little superior to that material stuff. Hmm? Spiritual's really where it's at, right? And ashram is spiritual. That's why we like ashram. Right? And it's a, that idea of dividing existence into spiritual and material, Osho regards as complete stupidity. How do you cut existence into two? For him, the only holy thing, if anything's holy, it's at least whole. And ask yourself, when you have a really good poop in the morning, is that spiritual or unspiritual? How could you even possibly answer the question? Maybe Kabir would say, if you're present, it'll be a spiritual poop. But I mean, come on. It's such an insanity. Right? For Osho and the other lot of people who go, resort, <laughs> sniff, sniff, means it's not really spiritual enough. It's just sort of touristy, you know, but commercial. You see, it's all really our conditioning showing. Right? Osho wants both. The spiritual and the material come together as Zorba and Buddha and rubs it really in by explaining that even if you have to choose between Zorba and Buddha, I always choose Zorba. Because at least Zorba might become Buddha. Buddha is never going to become Zorba. No escape. Both together. And it really goes against our conditioning it's hard to accept, and you can see 
Some people are still struggling with it decades later. Simple request. It's like pulling teeth. Change. Right, a meditation resort. Mm, uncomfortable. As always, Osho really knows where our conditioning is stuck and goes exactly for that point. So that's really important you understand. Because look at the evening meeting. It's not spiritual and holy and full of meditation and serious. It's very much this quality. Every meditation is. The whole place is. And it's an integral, absolutely revolutionary part of Osho's message. So it's really important to understand this. So, nine months had gone. Or nine months and nine days had gone. And personally, I actually hadn't a clue. I really didn't understand what what is the evening meeting, right? I, so, you know, is this some sort of like a sort of religious, spiritual, something TED talk, I wondered? Is it some kind of super professor's talk on, you know, I mean, I was really like, how to, what, it, what? And then I went and did a research project because I really wanted to understand. And I looked for every single reference I could find of Osho speaking on Osho speaking. What's actually, what's the plot? What's the play? What's, what's actually going on, right? And there are many, many, many references, and I recommend you do exactly that. Go to the Osho.com library and just type in listen, wildcard, asterisk, space, me, and that'll get you started with maybe hundreds of references where you can start to really dig down into what is this all about. And tonight I'll just give you a few little snippets from that. And a few years ago, uh, I was doing a, a, a session with somebody. And I, like I normally would, I, I asked him, so the evening meeting is fine and everything's going okay. And I just got the feeling the light wasn't going on. He didn't seem to respond at all. So I said, well, I did all this research on trying to, for me, just to try and understand what Osho is explaining about it, and I can share that with you if you like. And uh, he said, totally fine, and which I did. And then he came back a week later. Now, this guy had been involved in Osho's work then about 40 years, a long time. And he comes back a week later and says, you know, I meditated for the first time three days ago. So I really alert you to how easy it is to miss the whole plot. 